Union will fully open tomorrow after years of construction and marks the largest project of its kind ever on campus, but just one of several new buildings. UT says two new residence halls will open on the west side of campus this spring, Dogwood and Magnolia Halls. A new campus dining facility will break the ground by April at the former site of Humes Hall. Two residence hall will remain closed temporarily in the spring semester. UT says White Hall is closed as crews replace the building's brick veneer. And cleanup work continues at Laurel Hall after students reported finding mold. The university says Laurel will reopen in the fall of 2019. The construction updates come after a busy 2018 on campus. 10 News reporter Sean Franklin explores this past year at UT. West campus is under attack. 2018 started in protest at UT. Hate speech is not free speech. The traditional workers party, considered a hate group, arrived on campus for a speaking event. They faced hundreds of protesters. The Board of University that's progressive. We're not going to stand for hate and discriminatory uh, groups from coming to our campus. Hundreds of people also showed their unity at the Rock Against Racism event. Each handprint was a show of unity against hate. Just a few days later, a traditional campus event saw tragedy. 20-year-old student Tanner Ray lost his life as he prepared to box in the annual fraternity boxing tournament. Great friend. A brother. In March, UT decided to go smoke free. I think in time you'll see that it'll just become a natural setting that we're, we're striving for. The change in policy accompanied a change in the Board of Trustees. State legislators decided to shrink the board from 27 to 11 with a bill passed in April. We love a massive change happened at the beginning of May. The students are heartbroken. The university decided Beverly Davenport was out as chancellor and many students weren't happy. Chancellor Davenport has been our advocate. Uh, she stands for us and we stand for her. Yes, yes, give him six. UC Touchdown. would then lose a titan of its football program, the voice of the volunteers, John Ward. He passed away June 20th. He was 88 years old. The entire state of Tennessee reveled in the fact that John Ward was our guy. He called games for the Vols through 30 football seasons starting with basketball in 1965 and going all the way to the football championship season in 1998, John Ward was a maestro at painting the action on the field and the court. There was no internet or digital. Radio was it, and you had to paint the picture. Ward would have been proud of the hype surrounding the Vols' first home game in September. We were up at 8 a.m. ready playing Rocket Top in our apartment. It was new head coach Jeremy Pruitt's first home game, and the Vols came out on top. People have always told me that I would know when it's time, and indeed it is time. UT System President Joe DiPietro stepped down later in September. Gubernatorial candidate Randy Boyd was named his replacement. He stepped into his role at the end of November. Randy, as all of you know, is a very successful business person. He's probably even more successful in terms of how he's advocated for education across our state. Education on Knoxville's campus continued, but not without complications. The university found mold in a popular dorm, forcing 586 students to find a new home. Really, right now, we're just trying to see where we're going to go. A well-known professor, Dr. Henry Grissino Mayer, resigned after sexual misconduct allegations. The documents not detailing specific incidents, but ordering him to stay away from students and colleagues. And the rock popped up again. This time, someone painted hateful messages and swastikas all over it. But students were determined to stand strong. Whether you're a Jew, a Muslim, black, white, gay, straight, trans, it, it doesn't matter. Be confident in who you are. An attitude the university hopes to carry with it into 2019 on campus. In Knoxville, Sean Franklin, 10 News. And you can see all of the year in review stories on our website, WBIR.com. It's certainly a chilly way to bring in.